In this activity, we're going to go over how to use the distance and angle mates as well as the measure tool to solve assembly problems that you might be given uh, either as practice or for the CSWA. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start a new assembly with my base piece being uh, in this in the uh, distance and angle training, um, the uh, base. So we're going to first bring the base in because this is the part we want to be fixed. The next thing, I'm, the next part I'm going to bring in is the wheel. And I am going to use a couple of mates to assemble the wheel to the base. So I'm going to go ahead and use the hole through the middle of the wheel and the stem here. Didn't like that. Try again. On a concentric mate, and that works great. I'm then also going to put this face with this face so it sits at the end. The next piece I'm going to bring in um, is actually the one called the piston. So insert component and the piston and a red component should come in. I'm going to add two mates. The first mate is going to be the round part with either of the holes in the base so that it lines up like that. And the other thing I'm going to do is this face and this face are going to be parallel. What that will do is the piston, again, when I get out of the mates, the piston can now move up and down, but you can see this flat part does not spin. It remains consistent because we have a connector piece that is going to connect the wheel to the piston. That's the piece I'm going to grab now. So insert component, bring in the connector, and I'm going to set this down. This one will need to be rotated, which I'm going to do through my mates. I'm going to go ahead and put the underside of the bar portion coincident to this face of the wheel. I'm going to then put the large post into the large hole, which is in the wheel. And you can see it is telling me which direction goes up, but you'll also notice the two posts were a different size. So now I can put the small post in the smaller hole that is in the piston and make them concentric. And what I have now is uh, an assembly that is what does show as underdefined, but as you can see, this is meant to be moved. So I can actually move the wheel and the piston will go up and down. The nice part is too, is I can actually move the piston and it will force the wheel to go up and down which is nice. Now, you'll notice a few things. First off, the wheel does have an indicator line on it. Just this center line here. Um, we can use that both for mates and for measuring. Now, when you do something like this, it might show you a drawing where it's then asking for like, if the distance from the uh, end of the piston to the top of the base is a certain distance, what is the angle? of this construction line to like the vertical edge of the base, which sounds confusing, but when you see what I'm about to do, it's really not, okay? I don't have a sample question to show you, so just if you'll follow with me. Um, first off, you do wanna make sure you're working in the right units. I need to switch mine. There are now I'm in the metric system. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is that we can use what's called an angled mate to set this line so that it's a certain angle from something else. Um, so when I do my mate tool, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that line and I'm going to select this edge here. And you can see it automatically goes to a parallel relationship, which if that's what I wanted. That's fine. Um, but in this case, it's not what I want. I'm going to go down to the very bottom option and I'm going to pick angle. Now it's going to turn it back to kind of where it was. Um, so what I can do now is I can actually set this to be like 90 degrees. And you can see, I'll get a 90 degree relationship between those two edges. 
I can set 130 or um, I'm sorry, a 13 degree angle. You can see it's going kind of from the bottom. That's why it kind of looked a little weird when I had it before and it was like 143 and it was kind of sticking um, up off to the side over here. It's because it's kind of aligning them in a, in a downward direction. Um, I can also flip that angle, okay? And now it's measuring from this, this way, 13 degrees. Okay, so that's um, that's a pretty nice. I can also, I, like I said, I can flip the dimension as well. So this is actually the way I wanted it is where it's kind of, it's that, um, it's up here. So it's very easy to do that. The nice part is, is this this angled mate, if, as I accept it, is now in my list and it's the last thing in my list. Now, if I was given an A, which is an angle, and a B, which is a distance, what you would see is you would see something like with angle A set at 13 degrees, what is distance B? And so in my case, this is angle A. If I click slowly on this, I can name it and I can call it set or angle A. And I like to name it like that just because now it's easy to identify, okay? One of the things that is helpful when we're dealing with assemblies is also the ability to suppress or unsuppress a mate. What that does is it doesn't make it go away. It just makes it not applicable right now. Because at this point, if I try to grab and spin the wheel, you'll notice it's fully defined. I can't do that. However, if I suppress this mate, you'll see it's still there. It's just grayed out but now I can actually spin the wheel and move things around, okay? So I can suppress that set for angle A. Like I said before, you might see a question that says, with distance B set at a certain distance, what is angle A? So if I add a distance mate here, so I'm gonna put this surface, very end surface, to this surface. They wanna make it parallel, I'm gonna change it to distance. And if I set this at 100 millimeters, you'll notice everything moves such that those two items are 100 millimeters, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I am going to name it. Set for distance B. Now, unfortunately, they can't work together. I can't like set distance this, set this one then come back to this other mate and read my distance. That doesn't work. Um, so when you're making changes, the easiest thing to do is actually suppress them both. Because again, they're kind of controlling the same thing. You know, at this point, again, I can rotate and I can do what I need to do. Okay. Um, and if I unsuppress my angle A, it'll go back to that position. Okay. If I try to unsuppress this, it gets mad. All right. So just be aware of that. Um, and again, if you're when you're going to make changes, one of the first things you can do is suppress them both, figure out what you're supposed to set based on the question, and set those. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. So let's say it tells us to set angle A at 90 degrees. I can unsuppress that, so set for angle A, and I can edit my feature. Unfortunately, this will not take a variable. So I know it's using A and B again, but it's not quite the same. So I'm gonna set that at 90 degrees. Watch it rotate, leave that where it is. My model is currently fully defined. So in this position, it is fully defined. I'm gonna get out of the mate tool. I'm gonna to go to evaluate and I'm gonna click measure. Now the measure tool, when you first open it, looks like this, okay? And I can click the end here, and I can click the base here, and I get a whole bunch of stuff that kind of pops out at me, okay? Now, I would tell you the best thing to do is to keep this dropped down, okay? To keep this dropped down. Now, you can look at what it's saying and probably figure it out. So it's trying to measure, this black line appears to be like some sort of angled line Normal distance is the distance actually between the two faces. That's what I want, or this distance Y, you'll notice they're the same number, okay? But the normal distance is what I'm looking for. So this 67.67 millimeters is the answer to my question. If the question was, if angle A is set at 90 degrees, what is distance B? 
Okay. And this is how I can figure that out. Okay. When I click off of it, you'll see that it clears. All right. Let's say, pretend I was asked a question in the other way. Okay. So I'm going to close the measure tool. I'm going to suppress angle A. I am going to unsuppress distance B. And I am going to set distance B this time at, uh, let's do 85. Okay. And then ask me then, okay, with distance B set at angle 85, what is angle A? And at this point, I'm going to click measure. And I'm going to click my measure, my indicator line there. And I'm going to click my vertical edge. And as I look at it from the front view, you can see that I'm measuring those two things. And it asks, and one of the things that, again, if you don't have this dropped down, okay, it just shows length and distance. If I drop this down, I get extra information, okay? Angle, this is what I want to know, 75.44. That would be the angle that I would type in as my answer, because that is the angle between those two lines. So this is the easiest way to do those two types of questions. In general, that's really it. Now, you may find some strange questions where it has you set this angle and then maybe gives you a different distance, you know, not the angle, not distance B, but maybe something like from the top of the piston to the bottom of the base or something like that. That's fine. It all, ha it all is set the same way, okay? It's all set the same way. And this is actually quite similar to a couple of the um, CSWA problems. And honestly, as long as you can do this, even when there's more parts moving around or going on or two wheels or multiple pistons or something like that, you'll be able to handle it no problem. Use these tactics uh, to and, and the assembly we've created to answer the questions in the uh, assessment that is uh, following this video.